Hi, I'm Kaylin Amadio, your Boomer host and creator of the Boomer's Ultimate Guide podcast. And I want to introduce you to today's special guest, Aaron Anderson. He is a licensed marriage and family therapist and owner of the Marriage and Family Clinic in Denver, Colorado. He is a writer, speaker, and relationship expert. You can find him online on his blog, The Relationship Prescription, and the URL for that is relationshiprx.net. And you can also find info about his clinic at www.themarriageandfamilyclinic.com. And of course, I will post both of those in the show notes. Aaron, welcome to the Boomer's thank Ultimate you. Guide podcast. Uh, thank you, Kaylin. My pleasure. I'm so glad that uh, we were introduced. This yeah, will be terrific. We have some mutual friends, so this is going to be fun. Yeah, now, I look forward to that. Now, I gave people just a short bio, but can you um, give us a little more overview of of how you got into your practice, you know, what you do for people? Mm -hmm. And you yeah. can even, uh, you don't look like a boomer to me, but if you are, I, I'm not going <laughs> to stop you from admitting it. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not as young as people think I am, though. I guess I have one of those uh, Dick Clark faces, people tell me, where... Uh, uh, he was 80 and he still looked like he was a teenager. That's true, he did. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so uh, here at the Marriage and Family Clinic we specialize in marriage and family related issues and all my uh, graduate work, all the presenting work, all the, the work that I focus on here in the clinic is specific to uh, couples and families and so that's what makes uh, my focus unique as well as the clinic unique is uh, we focus on the gamut of uh, marriage and family specific related issues. So that includes um, youngsters, boomsters, whatever. Uh, we focus on the, the whole age range. So, so marriage and family. So you you'll you'll do um, therapy with the whole family, kids and adults. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we have adult families who will come in, for example, and. Uh, they're having difficulties uh, ever since one was a teenager and they're still not talking years later. Uh, when it comes to like writing a will and someone is upset that Sally got the china cabinet instead of uh, Sue. Uh, we, we do the gamut, yeah. Oh my goodness. There's, I guess there's all kinds of things. I hadn't even thought about that. So uh, tell me, you, you know, this is the Boomers Ultimate Guide podcast. So I'm, I'm specifically concerned with how we can help um, boomers. I'm going to be selfish and help myself and uh, and my audience, if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. So, tell me, uh, for you in your practice, how is working with boomers different? Well, boomers are are a very unique population. Um, first of all, their parents uh, usually went through the Great Depression, and so they have much different outlook on things than, uh, say, Gen Yers or Gen Xers. Uh, in addition, boomers, they, uh, when it comes to couples related stuff, they are usually in a different stage of life. They're usually much more stable. They usually have a lot more um, um, kind of just practical matters when, when they're considering anything related to the marriage. And two, they, they don't have the same kind of marriage related difficulties that a lot of the younger folks do. The, the statistics show that uh, if you're going to get a divorce, most folks get a divorce within the first seven years of marriage. Hmm. And most boomers are well past that. They've been married for a while. And, and most of them, they're pretty committed in the relationship. Um, and, and so the, the stuff that they want to work on is usually more about, uh, uh, more about quality and satisfaction than it is about whether this is going to make or break the relationship. So that's one of the most uh, common differences that I see here in the uh, clinic. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I mean, I've been married 23 years, and, and that uh, it didn't occur to me. I guess my friends who are still married have mm -hmm. been married a long time. I didn't realize that statistics, you know, seven years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hence the seven-year itch, I guess, is where, where that <laughs> came from, right? I hadn't actually thought about that. But, uh, it could that. be, right? Or maybe it's a coincidence. <laughs> I don't know. So um, my next question for you, is if you could deliver um, your three top tips for mm -hmm. 
for baby boomers regarding their, you know, family and marriage relationships and keeping mm -hmm. them nice and healthy and growing into their continued old age. What would you what would you tell them? Okay. One tip would be that uh, your family satisfaction is important. Uh, like I said, most baby boomers, their parents uh, went through the Great Depression and so they, they don't really complain a lot. They were taught that by their parents. They just kind of get along how they can get along and they, they grit their teeth and get through stuff if they have to. <laughs> and so um, if you're not satisfied with your relationship with your child or your relationship with your, with your partner, uh, sometimes you just kind of grit your teeth and get through it. Uh, so my top tip would be, it, it is important. Your your happiness, your satisfaction is important. If you're not living the life you want to live, uh, by golly, you've, you've deserved to live the life you've lived. And so um, read books, go to a counselor, talk to your uh, estranged child that you haven't talked to for a while, and, and try to try to do something to fix that satisfaction because that's important. Right. Um, the other one is that your quality of life, um, your, your, your children are looking up to you in a lot of ways. And so even in ways that you don't know, even though they're, they're likely all adults by now, they still look up to you as their parent. And so you still have a responsibility there as their parent just the same as you did when they were younger and they were living with you. Now, you don't have as much influence, and that's going to be my third tip. You don't have as much influence uh, as as you did when they were still living with you, but they still do look up to you and you still do have some. And and there comes my third tip is remember, you do still have influence. And a lot of folks, a lot of baby boomers who come into the clinic don't realize how much influence they still have to help relationships. And so uh, give yourself more credit. You can actually change things that you don't think you can change in your family. And I, I would respectfully disagree with you that the children are all grown because, I mean, I'm a boomer. I'm towards the end. Uh, I've just turned 51 this week. So okay. you know, happy birthday to me. But right. the youngest boomers turned 50 this year. Okay. So they can still have relatively young children. I mean, my youngest child's 15. Okay. And I have a 19-year-old and a 21-year-old. So yeah. if we're if yeah. we're the younger boomers, we still have kids in school. Many of us. That's so, true. So you know, it's such, it's such a huge uh, generation, 1946 yeah. to 1964. So I guess that's yeah. I don't like doing math in public. That's around yeah. 18 years, maybe something like that. It's a long, yeah, you know, it's a long time. Yeah. So yeah, there's a there's a big gap there. There is, yeah. Well, and, and with that, because everyone knows teenagers still are, are headaches. Right? Oh, they don't listen you know, to you, and they think oh they know God. what you do. Yeah. Um, you still have more influence. Than you I'm think. glad to hear you say that, you know, from your <laughs> lips to, to God's ears, right? Because uh, okay. there are times when I really think I have three sons. So, you know, I'm, I'm really outnumbered in my household, uh, right, with a husband and three sons. Right. And I think nobody listens to me, but I'm, I'm going to put in the back of my head that Aaron told me, they really are listening, whether you realize it or not. They're absorbing they some things from yeah. you. And even in their adult years, they will too. <laughs> That's good. That is very good. So uh, what are the biggest challenges or obstacles that you see boomers facing in, in navigating these relationships? The, the biggest obstacles I see is that, that they feel like they don't have the right to complain, or they feel like they, they should be happy with what they have, and, and bless them for it, because I don't think there's enough people in the world that, that do that. Um, with that still, you, you still can, if you're not happy, by all means, do something about it. Even if it's not a miserable unhappiness, even if it's just, you know, I, I kind of wish maybe... Uh, uh, we'd vacation more, or I kind of wish, uh, you know, we didn't have um, this debt hanging out. Um, by all means, you you do still have power to do something about it, and and you're not being a complainer, you're not being a whiner. Um, it's your life, and and you deserve to have the happiness that you want. You know, you're the first person I've heard say that, and I hadn't contemplated it before, but you're right. I we don't complain 
all that. I, I mean, I, sh I shouldn't generalize like that, but we do tend to put up with what's handed to us and, and try mm -hmm. to make the best of it. And I've never, I've, you're really making me stop and think, you know, that somehow mm -hmm. f from our parents or society or whatever it was, we learned to go with the flow, you know, many of us don't be the squeaky wheel. And of course there are exceptions to everything, but uh, you're giving me some, some pause <laughs> today. Well, that, that's interesting. I, had, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So my next question for you is if someone is listening to you and I right now today to this conversation, what would you tell them to do right this moment? What's, what's the first action step? If we could get them to get up from the computer or get out of their car when they're done listening to this podcast, what would you tell them to go do right now? I would tell them to write one goal that they haven't yet accomplished in their life. The, the reason being is because um, most boomers are at the stage of life right now where there's a lot more independence than what they've had in the past. Um, uh, e even the, the youngest boomers uh, have teenagers at home and teenagers, you can even leave them at home for a, for a weekend by themselves, mm -hmm. depending on the Maybe. teenager. <laughs> <laughs> um, and most people don't look back and say, boy, I wish I would have worked harder, or boy, I wish I would have uh, spent more time in the gym. Most people look back and say, you know, I wish I would have written that book that I never got a chance to write. I, I feel like I really could have left a dent in the world if I would have written that book. Or I feel like I, uh, I wish I would have spent more time with my kids. Um, most people look back and have those kinds of ideas. And so this one goal that you feel like you haven't accomplished yet, your time's not running out yet, you're in a good place, you're in a good independent place to start working on that goal so that when you look back over your life you, you feel like you've made a dent and you've made the accomplishment that you want to accomplish and, and now's a great time to be able to do that. That's the one thing that I would give boomers is to write that one goal that you haven't yet accomplished and, and set out to do it. That I love that. That's first of all, it's very inspiring, and you're you're reminding me of Paulo Coelho's book, uh, The Alchemist. I don't know if you've ever read it. I've read a couple of his books, but The Alchemist is very interesting because the the underlying theme, you know, or the 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 overarching theme of the whole book, is that throughout this person's entire life, they um, there was something that their conscience kept telling them they, sh they were supposed to be doing. They were supposed to be following this path. They were supposed to be following this path. But they kept finding themselves veering from it. And, you know, life gets in the way and things happen. And But they kept getting called back to that one thing. And I think that a lot of people can, if they really sit and think, there's that one thing that they've always wanted to do or that's always called to them and they let life get in the way. Exactly. And they, they get really drawn off that path, and then they start to think, oh, too much time has gone by, or, gee, that's a really big goal, and how am I ever going to do that, or now I'm too old, or whatever it is. But it's it's inside your head for a reason. And I, I like that idea of going back to it. For me, it was writing a book, and I have finally accomplished that. And that's part of what the podcast is about, is... Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it's helping me launch my book because the book yeah. is the boomer's ultimate guide to social media and my entire life you know something's been telling me I'm a writer and I let everything else get in the way you know get an engineering degree not a journalism degree get right all these things but mm -hmm. it's never too late to to go back and and follow those dreams and listen to that little internal voice I like that very much yeah no no it's not not too late at all as a matter of fact the, uh, the 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 generation, the age that, that you're in, uh, and all boomers right now, is a really good age to do that because um, uh, you you have as much financial independence perhaps as you ever have so right. far. Um, you, your children are in a place where you don't have to attend so much to them. Right. They're still your children. You still need to attend them, but not so much. Um, and 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 you have time. Well, everyone's busy. No one has time, but but you have more time perhaps than you've had in the past when you've had uh, you know, very young children who've needed and been so demanding on your time. Right. And, now and this generation has the means to, according to the statistics, you know, uh -huh. boomers have the means to, to be doing these things too. Exactly. Uh, in general compared to other generations. That's terrific. I, I really like that advice. 
So uh, tell the listeners, what is the best way to get in contact with you? How would you like them to reach you? Well, the best way is definitely through my website, which is themarriageandfamilyclinic.com. Uh, it has my direct contact information there with my phone number as well as my email address. Um, uh, I, I love emails. I love uh, phone calls. Uh, give me a call to chat anytime. Uh, the other good way is through my blog, which is relationshiprx.net. Uh, you can read any number of my articles there and then leave a comment in the comment section and uh, I, I try to do my best to keep up with the comments and, and write back to some. So those are the two best ones. Okay, and and like I mentioned at the top of the uh, the broadcast, I'll make sure that I post those links in the show notes of this particular episode so it makes it easy for those of you out there listening to uh, to find those. This has been wonderful. You've given me some things to contemplate and I always love that. I love learning new stuff and I love... Um, I love when I'm enlightened just a little bit more every okay. day with every person I meet. So I thank you for that very much, Aaron. And My, uh, if you could, would you like to leave us with a, a story or an inspirational quote, something for us to walk away with? Oh, other than what I've already done, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I, how about this one? Um, you're more capable than what you give yourself credit for. It's one of the things that I have found working with so many clients, so many couples, so many families, is, is so many people come to me feeling just defeated and, and feeling hopeless. Um, but through the work that they do, mind you, not me, I'm just a, a catalyst really, right. uh, through the work that they do, they are able to accomplish things they had no clue that they were able to. Uh, and, and so I guess that's my inspirational thought is give yourself more credit, you're more capable than what you give yourself credit for. I like that. You are more capable than you give yourself credit for. And that is so true. That is so true. I'll never, I'll never forget the favorite thing that my husband ever said to me. I told you, 23 years, right? I've been married. <laughs> my favorite thing he ever said to me was, uh, I, can't, I can't remember exactly what we were talking about, but I was talking about some, you know, aspiration I had. I'm always, you know, I've always got new ideas and new aspirations and new things that I'm trying. And he, ju he just looked at me. He turned and really looked at me. And, you know, when you've been married a long time, you can have a lot of conversations without really looking your spouse <laughs> in the face, right? You don't right. necessarily look in, in each other's eyes anymore and really have a conversation. And he just turned and he really looked at me. And he said, you have always underestimated yourself. Hmm. And, it, you know, I thought... You waited 20 years to tell me this? Why didn't you? <laughs> you couldn't have told me this a while back. But no, it, it was such a wonderful thing because I suddenly saw myself through his eyes. Right? And all those obstacles that we put in front of ourselves, suddenly they didn't exist anymore because I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm different than I thought I was because I finally saw myself through someone else's eyes. So that's right. great. Aaron Anderson. It has been wonderful talking to you today. My pleasure. Thanks, Kaylin. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that you could make some time. And for those of you out there, you know you are listening to the Boomer's Ultimate Guide podcast. This is the place where boomers like me and like you can come together to learn and share and grow thriving businesses, which is what I concentrate on in my practice. But it's not just about business. It's about being able to live a vibrant life. That's why we're here together. Aaron, thank you so much. And everyone else, we'll see you next time. Take care. You've been watching Boomer's Ultimate Guide TV, the place where baby boomers like me and like you can come together to learn, share, and grow a thriving business and vibrant life. See you next time.